great one this week. So let's go to the Barnes Rodney Davis in Sports Hotline and welcome into the locker room a former Eagles defensive end, Carl Hairston. How you doing this morning, Carl? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm out here in the desert and I'm waiting for the Eagles to play the Cardinals. You know, Carl, we, we spoke the other day on the phone and just listening to you. I uh, just got kind of brought me back because uh, when you when you played uh, for the Eagles from 1976 to 1983, uh, of course, that team in 1980 went to the Super Bowl against the Raiders. And I was thinking about I went back to look at the roster and some of the, the players that were on this team and uh, – you guys played a, a 3-4 defense, and uh, that, that was uh, gave you – Ken Clark was a nose tackle. You and Claude Humphrey were uh, were the starters. Yeah, you know, we uh, – uh, matter of fact, Charlie Johnson was our starting nose tackle, but Kenny came in on third downs, and okay. uh, Claude, Claude came in on third downs, and we went to the 4-3 on third downs, but – you know, we were uh, we were a pretty effective four man front and three man front because we played hard. You guys, I'll never forget that team was great. All right, uh, Carl, tell our listeners where are you now? What are you doing? You had a long career, you had a fifteen year career in the NFL, and then when you you went on to coach for a long time, and you won the Super Bowl with your former head coach Dick Vermeil in St. Louis. You've had a long career. What are you doing now? Yeah, I'm I'm just retired now. I retired back in uh, 2015 from coaching. I coached in, matter of fact, uh, I coached in the Canadian Football League for three years uh, with the BC Lions. You know, so uh, after my uh, third year there, I retired in 2015. So I've been retired, and every now and then I help coach some of the college kids around here, or talk to some some of my high school kids rather, around here in Phoenix. But uh, I'm retired. Me and my wife living in Phoenix, Arizona, and just enjoying myself and watching football. You know, just uh, you know, I watch the NFL Red Zone Channel every Sunday, so I can watch every play. Carl, do you get an opportunity to speak with uh, your former teammates from the Eagles, especially from that 1980 team? Every now and then, I get a chance, and it's, it's through mostly through Coach Mill. You know, I, I, I talk to John Bunning a lot, and. You know, because me and him, uh, matter of fact, uh, me and him coached together with the St. Louis Rams when we won the Super Bowl in St. Louis. And me and John stay in touch, and he basically tell me. And again, I talk to Will Montgomery maybe once or twice a month, but uh, those two are the ones that I basically talk with the most. And, you know, they let me know how everybody's doing. And, of course, uh, uh, Will told me about the passing of Greg Brown, and that really hurt because Greg Brown was a good friend and a good football player. So, you know, those two guys kind of keep me in tune to what how my fellow teammates are doing. And, and through Coach Mill, we talk or text maybe once or twice a month. We're talking with Carl Harrison, former defensive end for the Philadelphia Eagles. And, Carl, uh, when you first came to Philadelphia, what were your expectations? Well, you know, I, I really didn't know because, you know, I was I was coming to a team that wasn't pretty, wasn't that good. And, you know, that was Coach Ramil's first year, and he drafted me uh, uh, out of University of Maryland Eastern Shore. But my expectations were to be a starter, you know, and I remember uh, my last – it came down to the last cut, and Coach Ramil came up to me and told me, says, uh, we're going to take a chance on you and keep you. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, it was weird you know, because they cut Will win, you know, and uh, I oh, ended man. up uh, – yeah, they cut Will win to keep me, so – I ended up starting the middle of the year, uh, and after that, that was it. I became a starter the rest of my career. Yeah, you were a feared defensive lineman. I know the Eagles had a great reputation. That You had a great roster. Uh, uh, we talked with Jerry Robinson. We've had him on, and and uh, we've had John Bunning on. So you guys had a great, uh, great team, great athletes, and great camaraderie, but the glue was probably Dick Vermeil. Am I correct? No doubt about it. You know, he he wanted guys around him that worked hard and you know and, and paid attention to the rules. And uh, you know, he always gave us the ability to you know kind of kind of form ourselves. And we took it from we took it from him on how to be good people in the community and uh, how to be uh, good football players. And his main thing was he just wanted to have people around him that worked hard and wanted to win. And that's what. And we, you know, believe it or not, we only had 
one first round draft. Well, we had two. We had two first round draft picks on defense. That was Jerry Robinson. Then Rondell Young came yeah. in. You know, but we just had guys that Charlie Johnson was a seventh round pick. I was seventh round, and you know, then when Carl Humphrey came in, you know, he was a first round. But you know, we just we just had a group of guys that played hard on defense and played hard on offense. Speaking of playing hard, uh, you know, we talk to we talk a lot about how much the game has changed. Mm-hmm. Tell our listening audience, uh, Carl, how hard were the pre- preseason practices under Dick Vermeil? <laughs> I tell you what, you know, when I first came in, you know, we had six preseason games, and uh, <laughs> that was, uh, you know, and every we went to training camp on July the third, and uh, a matter of fact, we was out in Chester, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania at Winder College, and the night that uh, the Fourth of July, we practiced twice a day, and that now we can hear fireworks you know, from downtown. But <laughs> training camp was—I mean, we had two, three-hour practices, and both of those practices were full contact. You know, and you know, we—it was hard, and you know, as we grew, you know, I'm like, God dang it, you know. But then as I grew on as a player, I'm like, how can I second guess a system? that made me a better football player and actually made me a better coach, you know? So it was hard from the beginning, but after, as we grew, as I grew older and as we grew older, that we didn't know what else to do. Well, you know, we, when I was traded to the Cleveland Browns, I was working so hard in practice. They told me to slow down. I'm like, I don't know how to slow down, <laughs> you know? So no, I, Carl, it, was, it was a big that, plus, you know? When, when, Carl, when that was happening, like when you guys, like in 1976, when you first got on the team, and maybe 1977, did you guys like, like hate for hate for Meal because he was pushing you so hard? Like you know, was, you, had, was it was it odds against for Meal until you learned it, that that well actually when he made you guys a better team, then you learned to respect him and love him. You no, know, we didn't. We didn't hate him. You know, we just didn't, we was like, well, what the what the crap is this? You know, <laughs> that, that, that didn't happen up. Because mostly, believe it or not, most of those guys that that thought like that, he cut them. He got. He said, "If you can't fit here, we'll cut you." You know, he <laughs> he he came in and started cutting veteran players right away. You know, because they couldn't handle the hard practice and they complained about it a lot. So he didn't want that to infiltrate into the younger guys. So he cut <laughs> players, cut some veteran players just to keep us in in check and to tell us that this is how we're going to do it and this is the program and. He stuck with that throughout his whole career. And he changed a little bit when we went to the St. Louis Rams. But, you know, that was his philosophy. And that was my philosophy when I became a coach because I didn't know how else to do it. <laughs> We're talking with Carl Harrison, former defensive end for the Philadelphia Eagles, played from 1976 to uh, 1983. Carl, what is your, your favorite, your best memory of playing in Philadelphia? My best memory was uh, beating the Dallas Cowboys in Philadelphia uh, oh, in the yeah. NFC Championship game. And, you know, I always tell people, you know, that that was a tough-fought game. But people – I'm not a – people always ask me, so, what was the turning point of that game? I said, well, if you look in the third quarter, you know, when I sacked Danny White and knocked the ball out, that was the turning point of that game. You know, and, and I was, so I'm not being a conceited person. I say, if you no, no, no. the game, you see how hard that game was. But when I did that, you know, and we went into score, that changed the whole complex of the football game. So, you know, uh, we just – and Will Montgomery had those great runs. And, yeah. you know, we played hard on defense and Wilbur took it on offense. And, man, that was – to me, that was the uh, – uh, that was a turning point of, of uh, uh, that game. And – you know, matter of fact, I still have that screenshot on my iPad with me second down the right <laughs> the ball out. You know, but I'm like, man, that was, and that, that was so much fun. And then just to just to see the fans, you know, after the game and, and cheering the day, it was it was a great something to probably. And that year, if I'm not mistaken, all three, uh, all, all four three teams went to championships that year. You know, we brought that up. I I think I brought that up with uh, Jerry Robinson. He yeah. said that was just such an electric time. And I remember, as a, I, like I said, I was in high school. That was such a cool – I don't know if that's ever happened again where all four teams were their respective championships that year. That was unbelievable. And I didn't, it didn't dawn on me until, you know, maybe that next year. I'm like, whoa, 76 was went, the baseball team <laughs> went, the hockey team. I'm like, well, man, that truly is a city of champions. Yes, you know, it is. So it is. It was a great town, and the fans support their teams, and – you know, it'd be, it'd be, you know, 
I, I couldn't see uh, not having those sports teams in Philadelphia because it's blue collar town, and we became a blue collar football team, and we we that's how we won. Well, Carl, you gave us great memories, and uh, I really appreciate you uh, taking time to spend with us and visit with us for a little bit. We haven't, you know, I don't think people get to hear. This is a great segment because we get to touch base with former Eagle greats. And uh, thanks for the memories. I really appreciate it. No worries. No, go Eagles. You bet. All right, let's go, Birds. Thank you, Carl Harris.